Hello my scholars, you are welcome to my YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In our previous video, we talked about linear motion, an example of a one-dimensional motion. In today's video, we are going to be discussing about projectile motion, which is an example of a two-dimensional motion. So relax, do not go anywhere and we'll be right back. You are welcome back to my school YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing about projectile motion. So before we dive into the topic proper, let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson. So at the end of this lesson, scholars should be able to state the meaning of projectile motion, state the meaning of projectile with example, derive the range, maximum height and time of flight of a projectile, which are terms that are related to projectile motion, then uh, solve simple problems on projectile. Then the last but not the least, note the application of projectile. So in our next slide, we'll begin with what is a projectile. So a projectile is an object or a body launched into the air and allowed to move on its own or move freely under gravity. Okay, the primary force acting on a projectile is gravity. Now this does not necessarily mean that there are no other forces that are acting on the object okay but the effect of other forces are minimal compared to that of gravity okay so the path followed by a projectile okay when a projectile is launched into the air the path followed by that projectile is what referred to as trajectory so examples of projectile in everyday life are a thrown javelin a bullet fired from a gun a kicked ball a short arrow, a stone shot from a catapult, a diver from diving board, etc. are all examples of projectile in everyday life. So let's move to the next slide to see what projectile motion actually means. So projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion of an object thrown obliquely into the air. So the word obliquely there simply means at an angle. Okay, but for an oblique angle, an oblique angle is not uh, it's not a right angle triangle. Okay, so that object is not thrown at right angle triangle into the air. Okay, so another word for obliquely here, we can say angled or sloping. So when a projectile is released, okay, before it falls to the ground, it follows a curved path. Okay, so it is one that follows a curved or parabolic path. Okay, and um, it is due to two independent motions at right angles to each other. So projectile motion is due to two independent motions and these uh, two independent motions are at right angle to one another. These motions are a horizontal velocity component, a vertical velocity component as shown in the diagram below. So this is the horizontal velocity component and this is the vertical uh, velocity component. So in our next slide, we explain these two motions properly. Okay, for the horizontal velocity component, what happens is that um, the velocity, okay, the horizontal velocity never changes, okay, it never changes, that means it's constant, so it covers equal displacement in equal time period. This means that the initial horizontal velocity equals to the final velocity, so there, the, um, the horizontal velocity is uniform, okay, that is why the initial horizontal velocity equals the final horizontal velocity. So in other words, we say that the horizontal velocity is constant. Okay, it is constant. So why is it constant? Why is the horizontal velocity constant? It is because gravity does not work horizontally to increase or decrease velocity. That is the reason why the horizontal velocity is constant. So mathematically, just like just like vector, we can resolve this velocity into horizontal and vertical component. Resolving the horizontal velocity will be having that the horizontal velocity component us is equal to u cos theta. So take note of that because we are going to be using this when we'll be deriving some equations. Okay, so the horizontal velocity component ux is equal to u cos theta. Okay, so let's talk about the vertical velocity component. So the vertical velocity component is quite different from the horizontal velocity component in the sense that for the velocity component, the vertical velocity changes, okay, due to gravity. That means that it is not, it is not constant, 
Okay, it does not cover equal displacement in equal time period. Okay, both the magnitude and direction changes. As we saw in the diagram in the previous slide, okay, as the project moves up, the magnitude decreases and its direction is upward. Right? As it moves downward, the magnitude increases and the direction is downward. So mathematically, the vertical velocity component Uy is equal to U sine theta. Okay, it's equal to u sine theta. So take note of this too. When we'll be deriving the range, the maximum height, and the time of flight, we are going to be using this velocity component. So let's move to the next slide. So on the next slide, we are going to be discussing about terms related to projectile. So this diagram represents uh, the diagram of a projectile motion. Okay, so these symbols are very, very important and we should take note of them. So the U here is called the velocity of projection. Okay, why the H here is referred to as the maximum height. The theta here is referred to as angle of projection. Why uh, the arrow here stands for the range or you say the horizontal range, which is the horizontal distance. Okay, so I've seen in Wyatt Pass question where a diagram like this is given with all these symbols and we are asked to... Um, to identify the symbols, to tell them what they represent. So this is very, very important. So let's define each of these uh, symbols, okay? So the theta they represent or uh, is called the angle of projection, okay? And the angle of projection is the angle with the horizontal at which the body is projected. Or you can say it is the angle that the projector makes with the horizontal, okay? With the horizontal plane. And it's denoted by theta. Then we also have a velocity of projection denoted by u. It is the velocity with which the body is projected. Very simple. And it is denoted by u. So let's move to the next slide to see the other terms that are associated to projectile motion. Then we have time of flight of a projectile. So we define time of flight of a projectile as the time required for the projectile to return to the same level from which it is projected. The time required for a projectile to return to the same level from which it was projected. So time of flight of a projectile is denoted with capital letter T. Okay, it's denoted with capital letter T. So below we see the derivation of the time of flight. Okay, the time of flight. So I want us to move to the board to uh, derive the time of flight of a projectile. So, um, in deriving the time of flight of a projectile, we need the first equation of motion, which is V is equals to U plus A T, right? But remember that uh, time of flight of a projectile simply means, let's assume that this is the horizontal plane where the object is projected and it got to this height and return back. Okay, that is what referred to as time of flight of a projector. So, but the object will spend some time to get to this part. So the time the object spent to get to this part is what is referred to as time to reach maximum height and is denoted by T mass. Okay? It's denoted by T mass. Why? The, now, remember that when we are discussing about uh, motion under gravity, okay, one of the points that I said you should take note of is that the time taken to move from the horizontal level to the maximum height is the same as the time taken to move from the, uh, the highest point to the horizontal plane. Okay, so that means that time of flight is equal to two time to reach maximum height. Okay, now take note that this motion is about the vertical component. Okay, it's about the vertical velocity component. So we are going to do some substitution here. This U here is equal to the vertical component of the motion. So in that case, U becomes UY. Okay, why our A here, since we are doing, since we are moving against gravity, so our A here will be equal to, sorry, our A here will be equal to G. But remember that we are going against gravity. So since we are going against gravity, our G will be negative. So we'll be having negative here. Okay. Now, remember that at maximum height, okay, at maximum height, V is equal to zero, right? So we are going to substitute this into our equation of motion. So in that case, we'll be having, okay, let's still leave our V. So V is equal to UY, right, which is the, the uh, vertical velocity component minus gt right but remember that at maximum height 
Okay, at maximum i v is equals to zero. So we'll put zero here is equals to u y minus g t. Now remember that your t here is time to reach maximum height. Okay, time to reach maximum height. So let's collect like ten. So if we move u y to this side, we're having minus u y minus is equals to minus g t. So minus can kill off minus. So we make t okay the subject of formula so that t is equals to u y all over g but remember that this u y is the vertical velocity component and the vertical velocity component u y as we saw earlier is equals to u sine theta okay so in place of u y we replace it with u sine theta so time to reach maximum height becomes u sine theta all over g since we replace uh, the vertical velocity component with u sine theta so this is the time to reach maximum height okay this is the time to reach maximum height so take note of it but remember that what our focus is actually about time of flight not time to reach maximum height but time of flight is equals to two times time to reach maximum height like i explained earlier i said the time to move from this point to maximum height is the same as the time to move from the maximum height back to the same horizontal plane right so in that case our time of flight is equals to 2 t mass i think i've stated this earlier on here right so but we know that this is time to reach maximum height and our time to reach maximum height is u sine theta all over g so we just substitute this value in place of t mass so that t is equals to 2 sine theta all over g so this is the formula for calculating time of flight of a projectile okay so let's move over to the screen so um, what you are seeing here on the screen is exactly what i did on the board so i went to the board so that you see uh, properly how the formula came about okay instead of just showing you on the screen okay so this is where we come to the end of preview for today's video so if you want the complete video, you can click on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website. There you have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video. In the complete video, we continue with the derivation of some of the terms related to, uh, to project and motion, such as the range and maximum height. Okay, and we also apply these formulas in solving simple problems. Okay, so in order to enjoy the complete video, you have to click on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website. There you have to subscribe to enjoy it and I promise you, you will enjoy it. So I believe you enjoyed today's video. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video.